yes good afternoon uh welcome to my daily chat daily talk this is episode number 762 and the topic today is who are you pretending not to be in love love and in life i'm going to break that down in a minute and explain why this topic came to me um without giving any spoilers <laughs> but before i do that let me introduce myself to so you know who i am and why i do these talks every day my name is barry selby as you probably figured out from seeing around the somewhere around this video I am the best-selling author, or I should say the author of the best-selling book. I'm not sure which is right. Best-selling author, best-selling book. I've written a book that's done pretty well. <laughs> called 50 Ways to Love Your Lover. That is a seminal book about love and relationships. Seminal, is that a word? It's 50 principles for healthy relationships for singles, couples, men and women. In fact, some of them for gay or straight. Then it's not just for sing it's not just for straight couples. So it's more than that. And I'll put a link at the back end so you can check it out. Um, besides that, I'm also a, an inspirational speaker and relationship attraction expert helping women create balance in love, life, and business because I'm a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine. That informs my work. It also informs these talks I've done now for over two years called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. And today's going to be an interesting one. And I should... So the title again, by the way, it's episode number 762. I've done these every day now for over two years. This is a Facebook Live I do every day, usually at 5 p.m. Pacific time. But tomorrow being July 4th, I'm going to move it, so I'll let you know about that at the back end. Um, and so today, episode 762, the topic is, who are you pretending not to be in love and in life? Now, um, I took myself out this afternoon because, not because, but despite the fact that social media seems to be going haywire because things weren't working right, I'm just saying. I um, took myself out to see a movie today because I'm a big, as I said yesterday, I think it's about yesterday I talked about this. Yeah, I'm a big Marvel and, and comic book fan. Have been since I was a kid. I mean, science fiction has been one of my passions and led me to the spiritual path. That's a talk for another time. And so I went to see Spider-Man, Far From Home today. And without giving any spoilers and giving anything away, it crossed my mind about people pretending to be something they're not. Now, in the movie, there's a lot of that going on. I'm going to say what it is, but you have to watch it and you can see it for yourself. I recommend it. It's a fun movie. It's a great romp. And it's got some big, big hitting emotional points, too. And of course, with all the costumes, and Spider Man especially being in a full costume that hides himself completely, it's like, is he pretending to be something else? Now, in the movie, that's a different story. But I'm going to stick to this for you and for your edification. See, the thing is, we don't always wear. Um, spandex costumes at least I don't maybe you do I don't know <laughs> however if you're like me and I know we're a lot alike on this count we have this tendency to not always be as forthright as transparent and as honest as we could be so we pretend to be something else whether that's just simply to defend ourselves and protect ourselves or it's a means to simply be more discreet and make ourselves look better in other people's eyes I mean have you ever fudged your resume for a job have you ever kept some information private or secret from a date you were going out on because you didn't want to tell them until you got to know them better? These are all little symptoms of the same thing, which is not being fully transparent from the get-go. I found it, personally, an expensive thing to do, to maintain a falsehood past the point, first of all, past the point of doing it in the first place, but to a point where it's actually going to cause negative impact. Speaking the truth and being honest can sound like a very scary thing, and if you've been doing a lot of other things besides that, yeah, it probably is feeling scary. But the thing is, the easier, easiest path is the one you have to worry about remembering. You know, the idea about making up lies and stories and pretense is you've got to keep holding it together. Like, like a, um, sorry, I'm going to the movie. I don't want to use anything from the movie because I don't give anything away. No spoilers, as I said. Um, it's about how do you, how people put, hold together, they, there he is, weaving the tapestry of falsehood. Yes, that sounds poetic. Weaving the tapestry of falsehood. Because plenty of people do that. They create this illusion and this persona of something they're not. Because they think that's the way they're going to be, well, for most people, it's the way they think they're going to be accepted or approved of in the world and in love. The problem with these makeshift tapestries of illusion is they tend to come undone. And that's the problem when you're holding up a falsehood, a smoke screen a uh what's that move? uh clock of, oh yeah <laughs> harry potter showed up a cloak of invisibility I, I reach in different places to get ideas but the idea of being is that you're hiding who you are now in some cases this may be a safety precaution a um 
a cover up for safety, which I understand that some people have that where they're not willing to show their wounds to somebody else without trusting them. So in cases, for example, if you're a woman who has been through abusive relationships in the past, or maybe you had more well, rates when you're younger, it's not something you're going to tell somebody on your first date, usually. You might, but I mean, you might not hold that back. That's, that, for me, is, is, is a wiser choice, perhaps. Because maybe you don't want to just be right up front with the first thing you say, like, hi, my name is, and by the way, I was raped when I was very young. You get my point. I'm not saying that's the way to, not, that's the way to be transparent. What I am saying, though, is... Well, let me put it this way. I'm sorry, I'm, t I'm finding another way to present this piece. Is, you know, the common um, attitude is to dress up and look good for your first date. And of course, the joke is, you know, in the first date, you're dressed up to the nines, you're going to be like hair and makeup perfect, and the eyes will just drop in nice clothes, hopefully. But in a year or two of being in the relationship, you're in sweatpants and, and torn t shirts because you don't care anymore. There's something about that in a way we present, it's the same thing. Now, I'm not saying don't dress up at the beginning. I'm saying, you know, you want to present, put your best foot forward and present yourself. But also, do you have to keep a falsehood of how you communicate or what you talk about? Do you make sure the conversation stays within a certain little box of communication where it's the only thing you want to talk about because you know anything outside of that is, is challenging, perhaps, risky, perhaps? And this is the thing, is that a lot of times we put on a persona, a um, secret identity, or should say we keep our identity secret by putting on a different persona so that we can present to the world the way we think the world wants us to be seen. And we're afraid to show our true colors, our true beliefs, our true, our true beingness, because we don't know if we're going to be received or not. And frankly, I'm kind of getting done with that myself. And I'm saying this from the point of view of, as a cultural thing perhaps, but certainly in the area of relationships. Because there are more than enough people I know who've been in relationships that were in there holding back their truth and finally the truth got so strong they couldn't hold it back and they had to leave the relationship because the relationship was built on falsehoods like a house of cards one gust of wind of the truth and the house of cards falls down and so relationships sometimes that are based on falsehoods are like that they have that fragility so they can fall apart very easily and i'm not a fan of that as you can probably tell in my work and and the the, the group program I've, I've been developing, which I've been talking about a lot on my Facebook Lives, because I'm inviting people to check it out, called Coming Home to Yourself, a lot of components in that are about how do you come back to yourself and really honor yourself? Because so many people have lost touch with that. They're actually out of practice of actually being really honest. So actually look in the mirror and make eye contact with yourself and say to yourself what's really going on. To be honest, to tell the truth. If, for example, you're feeling sick, you're not doing anything about it because you want to look good to the outside world, meanwhile, you, you need to go see a doctor or something like that. Or perhaps, well, as in the case of some other people I know about, um, where people have gone, where you've gone on a date with somebody and they actually had another relationship but didn't tell you about it and you found out the hard way later on. There's a lot of extremes in this that are not pretty. So I'm suggesting to you as you're watching this, being one of my viewers, and I'm speaking to myself about this too, is to avoid pretense in any context now. Now, again, as I said before, you may not want to say on the first date something traumatic from your, your younger age unless you really want to vet the guys to make sure that they are either one, tough enough, two, vulnerable enough, or three, open enough to listen to you. Because then again, it could work for you. I'm not saying you should or shouldn't, I'm just saying what's possible. So the thing about this is, in your life, the question I'm asking you to consider is, where do you put on a mask, a costume, a pretense of something you're not, so you can make sure that, so that you, so that you can get what you believe the world wants to get? Whereas, if you were just yourself, truly, authentically, naturally, I had an interesting flash. I'm uh, not going to go there. No, that was from somebody else. Okay, sorry. <laughs> welcome to my welcome to my mind. It does this stuff where I'm on a point and suddenly another point comes in from sideways. Okay, let me get back on track to make this point um, more distinct. Okay, when I say another, I'm I'm using the movie in a way that doesn't. 
<laughs> that doesn't create any spoilers, but I want to use it in this context, which is that when you are um, putting on, a, when you wear a mask and a, and a costume long enough, at some point in time, someone's going to see you without it and see the real you. And they're going to have a confusion about who the real you is because that mask may still be the one they believe for so long. When they find out who you really are, they get really distressed or confused or conflicted. I've had that happen to me a couple of times where people assume stuff about me that wasn't true. This is where they put they put a costume and mask on me, so to speak, energetically. They presumed something about me that wasn't the truth, but they didn't ask. So for a while they were carrying this judgment against me, which until we had a conversation, I didn't know anything about. But when we talked and had a conversation, they suddenly realized the the presumption they had about me is a whole other piece I'm realizing now. They had was actually a total falsehood. That their um, lens they were looking at through was an illusion. Sorry, i got to be careful. <laughs> no spoilers, I said. Um, but the I'm realizing the movie has given me so much fodder for this, so I'll make sure this is this is relevant for you as well. Because the truth is, as much as that's a superhero movie and it's fantasy and it's uh, it's on the screen and everything else, there's some lessons in there for us as human beings, as people who are dating, who are in the world, expressing ourselves, is how authentic and true can you be? There are people out there I know um, who are big teachers in the world, like they stand on stage, do great stuff, but behind the scenes, not so much. I mean, the, st the stories that come out about politicians, about religious leaders, about celebrities, who you believe were a certain way all the time because they look so great on the screen in their interviews, then you find out they've been abusing little boys or they've been harassing women or they've been hiding a drug problem or they're totally self-centered. All these different things are this, this mask, this illusion, this, this falsehood that's been their, maybe their breadwinning modality in the world. But when it is revealed that it's not that, everything comes crashing down. And if you go watch the news of the last year or two with the Me Too conversation and other things too, there have been definite pulling back of the mask, revealing of the truth, the dust, the dastardly acts, interesting word, the, the acts of, of suffering that have been inflicted on others by these people and also sometimes self-inflicted there's something about coming clean that is really useful and in fact now flashing back to another movie uh, Rocket Man was out it's been out for a few weeks now I'm going to be spoilers on it but the, in Rocket Man there's a piece about Elton John's char the, the character of Elton John in the movie because it was a it wasn't a documentary it was a musical about his life but the, one of the biggest lessons was when he came back to really being honest with himself the healing began. So part of this consideration or part of this, this, this invitation I'm offering is for you to reflect on yourself and see where in your life you may have lost touch with who you really are, where you've actually got to a place where you were, um, and I'll say this another way, a place where you were less connected to who you really were and how you became so divergent from that place. And this is the thing. For some of us, it's happened when we were very young. Something happened when we were younger, where some, some upset, some tra trauma, some challenge, some tragedy, something traumatic happened. And so we had a split in our um, true nature and our wanting to be received and accepted and approved of. So we actually buried our true nature behind and kept going down this falsehood path. For some of you, that's the deep work you may have to consider is are you willing to come back to your true self? Are you willing to take the falsehood and let it go and allow your, your true self to reveal itself. So there's a range I'm giving you here of the whole thing about what you may, who you may be pretending to be. Part of it is simply just putting on an act just to be liked and be appreciated because you're afraid maybe you won't be liked and appreciated for who you really are. The other part is the deeper part is where you have a wound that hasn't been healed yet. Where you've been actually so protective of your true self, you've lived a falsehood for the, for the most of your life. Either way, I'm recommending that the truth is the healing modality that your truth is the way to come clean and to come back to yourself the best way possible. I do have some skills in this area to help you with if you want to reach out. I will put links in the comments because I already said I'm going to put the book in the comments. I mentioned coming home to yourself, so that will be in the comments as well. And also a discovery session with me if you want to talk about it. Excuse me, a clarity conversation with me. It's not discovery, it's clarity. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, but I'm hoping this is giving you some, maybe some hope, maybe some challenges, maybe some things for your consideration. This is a deeper topic, I know, but I wanted to get that on the table, partly because it's relevant at the moment, especially with some of the falsehoods I'm watching, 
and because I watched the movie today. So I do recommend going to see Spider-Man Far From Home. Fun movie for you're a, especially if you're a comic book fan, Marvel fan. It fits and stay for the two, stay for the two mid and end credit scenes because they do have that in this movie. It's just so you know, um, no spoilers there. And I think that's what I want to talk about. I think that's yeah. So replay. So I guess in case you're going to see my broadcast before I do this every day at five p.m. Pacific time, except tomorrow. I'm going to change times tomorrow. That's the thing I was going to mention, by the way. It's a Facebook Live on my personal page, which is uh, Barry Selby on Facebook. There's a replay that goes on my, onto my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby author, and then also onto my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. On my social media is my name, Barry Selby. A playlist on there called Messages for the Masculine. So subscribe to my YouTube channel, like my business page, please, and uh, you can watch my replays there. You can, you can comment and have any thoughts, questions, put them below. If you want to reach out to me, you can over social media, and as I mentioned, the links will be in the comments when I sign off. And um, what was the other thing? Oh yes, tomorrow, because tomorrow is July 4th, I'm gonna be out socializing. Yes, I know I'm English, but I'm gonna celebrate anyway. But I'll be doing my Facebook Live probably, um, just think of the time. It's gonna be early afternoon. So if you don't catch it live, you'll be in the replay. It's probably gonna be around 2, 2.30, just so you know, because once I'm out and about, I won't be thinking about it and I'm gonna enjoy myself. So join me tomorrow at some time. <laughs> Stay tuned, watch my Facebook. If you wanna make sure you catch my broadcast, there's somewhere around here on the broadcast, there should be a, a um, I think it's three dots on the top right hand side, right hand side, right, right hand side. The down there, there's a click of the list at the bottom is something that says more or it says um, notifications for live. So you can notify when I go live tomorrow. That way you can stay in, tr in touch. That I think is it. I appreciate you being with me. I hope there's been a value to you. I do invite questions, thoughts, concerns, of course. And uh, let me just ask you, who are you pretending not to be? And maybe it's time to drop the act and be who you really are. With that, I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.